on to Shalom and Friends for story time. <laughs> Do you have enough room there, Andy? Let me move that out of the way. Gosh, you're so strong. Oh, look, look who's here. Hello, friends. We are so happy to see you, aren't we, Indian Stew? We have a very special book chosen for you this week. It is called Six Crows, and it is by Leo Liani. Now, I just like to say his name, but he writes fables, and we actually have a couple of other books of his that we'll be reading later. Doesn't that sound good? But we chose this one this week because it talks about the harvest and the farmers. Have you noticed the, the trees are changing colors and the farmers are bringing in the corn and the wheat and the beans from the fields? Me too. So, are you ready, Stu? What about you, Wendy? Let's read Six Crows. In a peaceful valley at the foot of the Balabadar Hills, a farmer cultivated a field of wheat. The soil was fertile and the spring rains had been gentle. Life would have been good and happy were it not for six noisy crows who nested in a tree nearby. Have you ever seen a crow? What about you? They are big and they're very loud. Just when the wheat was about to ripen, the crows descended upon the field and pecked away at the tender grains. They must have been hungry. The farmer tried to chase the crows from the field, but no sooner had re he returned to his hut than they were back. In desperation, he built a scarecrow. Look at that scarecrow. Do you think that's scary? When the crows saw it standing in the wheat, waving a big stick, they were frightened. Well, I guess it was scary. They huddled in their tree and wondered what to do. We must scare that thing away, they said. But how? How do you think they're going to do it, Stu? Let's set the field on fire, shouted a crow. <laughs> that sounds like something you would say, Indy. But that would be the end of our wheat, the other said. That would be what I said. There were many proposals. At last they agreed to make a ferocious kite. They gathered bark and dry leaves and made a fierce and very ugly bird. Well, that is one way to go about it, isn't it? The next morning they flew the kite over the field. The scarecrow didn't budge, but the farmer was very frightened. He ran into his hut and bolted the door tight. I must build a scarier scarecrow. I wonder what's going to happen when they see the scarier scarecrow. Soon, a giant figure brandishing two swords stood in the wheat field. Its angry mouth seemed to grunt. That should do it, said the farmer. That is a much scarier scarecrow. But when the crows saw the new menace, they gathered more bark and more leaves and built an even larger and more ferocious kite. They flew it over the field back and forth. The farmer was so scared that he did not dare leave his hut. From her nest in an old tree, an owl had been watching the goings on. She shook her head. I don't know who was sillier, the farmer or the crows, she thought.
When she noticed that the wheat was wilting from neglect, she decided to talk to the farmer. Why don't you make peace, you and the crow, she said. It's too late now, said the farmer angrily. It's never too late to talk things over, said the owl. Ooh, that's a good lesson. Then she went to see the crows. What can we do, asked the crows, dismayed when they heard that the wheat crop was in danger. Go and talk things over, said the owl. Words can do magic. Hmm. What kind of magic words do you think they know? The crows and the farmer agreed to meet near the owl's nest. While the owl looked on, they talked and talked, first in anger, and then more reasonably, and finally like old friends. I must confess that I missed your happy cackling, said the farmer. And we missed your wheat, said the crows. Soon they were laughing together. We must thank the owl, said the farmer. But where is she? Her nest was empty. They looked all over. Ooh, where do you think she went, Andy? They went to the field. There stood the giant scarecrow, but something was different. The nasty grin had turned into a happy smile. The owl was perched on the giant's arm. What happened, they asked. Magic, she said. Do you see her winking? Winking at the crows and at the farmer. The end. Oh, that was such a good book. And I can't wait to hear what Indy and Stu learned from the book. But first, I want to tell you about next week's book. Next week, we're going to read The Rainbow Fish by Marcus Pfister. And this is going to be just an introduction to what we're doing in November because in November we're going to read rainbow fish stories every week. I can't wait for November. Hello friends! Stu and I really enjoyed the story Six Crows that Pastrix Carmen read us today. We thought that the scarecrow was pretty funny in the beginning, but towards the end, the scarecrow got really scary. But the wise old owl had good advice, just like Jesus. The owl said that the birds and the farmer should talk it out. Jesus told us in the Bible that if we go to pray or make an offering and we remember that our brother or sister or somebody has something against us, that we should go and fix things. This is exactly the same kind of message that the owl was trying to give to the birds and to the farmer. And by the end of the book, look what happened. Not only were they all friends, but the scary scarecrow wasn't scary anymore. The owl said it was magic, but I think it was the love that they showed each other that caused the scarecrow to smile. Will you pray with me? Thank you for today's story. It's fun finding out new things about our world. Help us remember what we learned today. We look forward to tomorrow and all the wonderful things you will show us. Amen. If you like story time or you like Shalom and friends, please like, comment, and share our videos with your friends. If you'd like to support the ministry of Shalom and friends, you can make a secure donation through our website or through the app at Roberts Park United Methodist Church. See you later, alligator! alligator.